Hello, my name is Rachel and I work with an English as a second language program here in one of the most diverse places of Philadelphia. All the time I hear some really heartbreaking, unbelievable and often very inspiring stories of how people came to America. I'm here with my good friend Eugene and his wife Anna. They immigrated from Belarus back in 2017. Uh, thank you. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for inviting us. Immigration is a very difficult and divisive subject right now in the United States and all over the world as we face one of the largest scale migrations in human history and a refugee crisis all over our world. Uh, my hope in this project is just to um, show people and, and in an honest and real way and in a way that shows our common humanity. So thank you, Anna and Eugene, for being willing to share your story with us. Oh, no problem. So tell me, when did you come to America and why? Yes, hello again, my name is Eugene. Uh, it's like a pretty simple reason why we came to America, uh, because we won a green card. If you know about diversity lottery, we just participated in that and we got lucky and we won a green card and back in 2017, as you mentioned, we came to the United States. And why we played diversity lottery, why we played the green card. So I was doing, and I still doing digital marketing for my uh, main job. And I was doing that in, back in Belarus too. But every year I noticed, I was noticing that it's harder for my clients to pay me for my services. And, and they getting complaining more and more every month paying me. And I understood something going wrong with economical situation in the country. And I have uh, my aunt, she is living in um, New York and I just wanted to visit her. And she said, hey, it's very complicated to get a visa for Belarusians because they probably will deny you, they will not give you, will not approve your visa. And she said, but you can try differently. You can just try diverse lottery to play and maybe you will be lucky and get this. I said, okay, why not? So that's how I started and I played three times, but I didn't play every year. I played like one year played, one year missed. And in the third time I applied, I already got my first baby. And yeah, I, I won the lottery and we decided to move to the United States. Mm -hmm. So how many years did you play the green card lottery before you came here? So uh, I just played three times, but I didn't play every year so i just like it took about six years six and years. yeah and wow. then i got, understood that i won the green card it took the process to get here it took about more than six months because you have to go to uh embassy to have an mm -hmm. interview all the stuff but uh the complicated situation with belarus was uh, in belarus we don't have embassy and uh united states government decided that all belarusians have to go to warsaw in poland mm -hmm. to have to uh, embassy in poland to have that interview and why it was complicated because you cannot just go to poland you have to get european visa to get there mm -hmm. so you have to pay for and you have to get visa for every member of your mm -hmm. family you have to pay you have to go for that time it was 2017 it was much easier to go either ukraine kiev or moscow mm -hmm. to, because they have embassies and they speak the same language as we they speak russian like in moscow they speak russian in, in ukraine they speak russian but and I, it, I, it was my frustration and confusion why we have to go to warsaw to get mm -hmm. a visa because even in, in polish it's slavic language but it's different language mm -hmm. and it was kind of com complicated mm -hmm. Now there's been a lot of political turmoil in, in Belarus in, in recent years. What was the political climate when you left Belarus and what is it now? Yeah, so well, a lot of Belarusians coming to the United States right now, even through Mexican border, uh, because they are escaping political situation in Belarus, because in Belarus we don't have like democracy, we have a d dictatorship and we have Lukashenko, he's a dictator, he's a, ruling the country of, for the last 30 years, I think. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine a couple of generations were born and <laughs> grown up and they still have the same president, mm -hmm. kind of president with his dictator. And 
we moved uh, to United States. We didn't uh, try to flee and escape from political situation. Yeah, it's affected us because it affected economical situation. Mm -hmm. And we didn't like the economical situation in the country because, mm -hmm. as I mentioned, it was harder and harder to make money every month. Mm -hmm. And But in 2020, we had uh, election president, president mm -hmm. election in Belarus again. And it was very... Uh, it was a big fake election, and he dictators say that he got about ninety six or ninety seven percent approval from people of the country. But it's not true. It's not. It sounds not dem democratical. Yeah, it sounds like fake. And um, it was very brutal. And it was a protest against that because people understood he rigged it. He faked it, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of people. Uh, go out to streets to protest, but it was very, very brutal uh, way how he, like, he beat them, he put people uh, in the prisons, and they tortured mm. people. A lot of people, mm. women and men, were mm. t uh, tortured, you know, like mm. physically damaged, like some even disappeared, and some people were killed, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's very uh, unsafe to be in mm -hmm. Belarus right now if you are like political opposition. Mm -hmm. yes. So, and after that year, 2020, a lot of people from Belarus who was on this protest, they started to leave the country, moving to Europe, Poland, and some of them trying to go to, mm -hmm. to, to get in on the United States through Mexican border because they mm -hmm. don't have any option to get here. Mm -hmm. Because Belarus now is, especially now after war Ukraine started, because Belarus is a partner of Russia. And Russians attacked Ukraine from the north, from territory of Belarus. So mm -hmm. that's why all sanctions, what we have, Belarus had a lot of sanctions before the war. Now we had, have much more sanctions. Mm -hmm. So it's hard as if Belarusians cannot go to, just go to embassy and say, hey, I need a tourist visa mm -hmm. to go uh, yes. to the United States. No, you cannot do that. That's why you, uh, Belarusians have only way to get in the United States. They go to Mexico and they kind of, mm -hmm. uh, Ask for asylum in mm -hmm. on the border, yes. and now it's getting worse and worse. And so, especially after war, people decided not go because of political uh, prosecution or something. Mm -hmm. yeah, they also trying to escape the war because it's very close. Yes. Because Belarus, if somebody don't know where is it, it's like a north of Ukraine and west from Russia. So they they have a war exactly next to them. Yeah. So uh, there are lots of lots of Belarusian asylum seekers, um, Belarusian refugees. Uh, our refugee process is so long and so complicated. It takes a lot of money even to go through the, that process. So you would say most Belarusians are seeking asylum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, and, but do you know, did you hear about CBP-1? No? So custom, uh, what uh, American border service uh, did, they created the CBP-1 app for your mobile phone, and it's custom uh, bar border patrol. It's called CBP-1. And if you come to the border of uh, Mexico and Russia, uh, Russia yeah. <laughs> Mexico and the United States, and you have this app, you can apply through this app uh, seeking for like getting in the country legal way. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard to get the time frame to get mm -hmm. in. To, to, it's like make. It's mm -hmm. really very similar, uh, like a get an appointment. Doctor appointment. Yeah, you have like, yeah, you have a date, you have a time, yeah. But if you got it, you you like it. But we have a couple of friends who got it, and they but they were playing like since in six a.m. till like mm -hmm. I don't know, no, almost all day trying to get that appointment. Wow. Yeah, it, they just sitting in there. But mm -hmm. if you got it, you it's kind of a legal way you enter to the United States. In that case, you can get a lot of. Uh, uh, not benefits, kind of benefits, it, a lot mm -hmm. of help from government. So you can get food stamps, you can get uh, what a Medicaid, like mm -hmm. a health insurance, you know how it's yes. important in the United States. And mm -hmm. also sometimes they even get a cash assistance. And for and they already legal way in that case, even for Philadelphia, for example, if you have a tourist visa, you cannot get driver license. But everywhere you need a state issued a photo ID. So you cannot get driver license because your political mm -hmm. asylum you just cross the border but or you have just a visa yes. yeah but if you came through cbp 
you can get this uh, driver license and you can get all of these benef benefits. It's very helpful for them. Yes, very similar to having refugee status here. It's kind of like that, yeah. Yeah, thank you. So you first arrived in New York City in 2017. What was that like? Tell me about what you experienced when you first came to New York. It was not the thing I was expected to see. <laughs> because uh, in Belarus, every foreigner who gets in Belarus, they say, oh, it's so clean everywhere. We have so clean streets, so nice and neat. And when I was moving back, uh, not back, but I was moving to United States, the strongest economic in the world, the like, strongest country in the world, the developed, most developed country in the world, I expect you to see something like nice and neat as Belarus, but strong economics. And when I step out in New York, Queens, Jamaica, uh, it's, I think it's Jamaica area, and oh my God, why it's so dirty? Why so, mu so much trash, just litter everywhere? Like what, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Because I thought, in my opinion, it was like, if you develop person, so who can get better economics? If you have better economical situation because you are more developed society, and if you have United States is the strongest economics in the world, so probably the society should be very developed. But when you see the trash on the street, like what is going on? Because in Belarus it's more cleaner, and we were shocked. Yeah. Then the process um, for a long period of time we couldn't rent any apartment because, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we came when my wife was pregnant. We had three years old, my daughter first one, and my wife, she was pregnant and she was on eight months of pregnancy. Wow. So, and everybody, we tried to, in Russian uh, speaking neighborhood initially, to find a, a partner or something, because we, we moved, we had some money. Uh, not, not a lot. I even can uh, tell you how much we had. For 2017, it was about $11,000. It's not much, but I thought it's enough to find an apartment and find a job. But we couldn't rent anything because everybody, Russian speakers in Russian speaking area, as soon as they heard that I have pregnant wife and I have a small kid, but uh, uh, by uh, New York laws, they cannot evict you if they, you have a kid. So what they were doing, they just refused us. And I couldn't find an apartment. And, but you know, I initially rented, when I was back in Belarus, I rented uh, one apartment in New York through Airbnb. Mm -hmm. But I rented it just for 10 days because I thought mm -hmm. in 10 days I will find mm -hmm. an apartment. But I couldn't. And it was a tough situation. It was a 10th day of my renting, uh, living in this Airbnb. And we have to move out next day, but we have no place to go. Mm. And thanks God, my wife's mother, she has a friend who lives in New Jersey. Mm. And she just gave us their phone number and we reached them out and they said, what? You're like, mm. but they didn't pick up the phone because usually I noticed it's an American thing. If you see the phone number, a known number for you, yeah, you usually don't pick up the phone. Yes. And I tried to reach her during the whole week. I was calling my, uh, my mother-in-law friend, but she didn't reply. She didn't pick up the phone because she thought it was a scam. Because also I had a New York number, 929. So that means it's scam because a lot of scam from New York number. And, but then my mother-in-law texted her. She understood that it's me. She called me back and said, oh my God, you have like, she was in shock from our situation. And they came from New Jersey. Uh, they were driving like about two hours to pick a, uh, us up from Brooklyn, took us to their place. They had a good house. And we were living about two weeks in their house. And in Jersey. In Jersey. And they helped to find us the first uh, uh, apartment for rent. It was one bedroom. It wasn't good. It was kind of even bad, but it was the first place where we can live. Mm. It was our place. Yeah. And it was in a basement in New York, but uh, if you don't know, but it's illegal to rent a basement in New York because mm -hmm. it's like an ocean eggs, it's bay. And yeah, but it was, was very small, but uh, 
one kind. It's it. I wouldn't say it's one bedroom. It was divided on bedroom and living room, but it's one room, one uh, room studio. Yeah, I would say it's one room st studio, almost no kitchen, and very bad situation with sewer because when it was mm -hmm. raining, a sewer going oh, from no. whole house was going to our uh, apartment, like oh. through the halls in the shower, and. Uh, like wet floor or like smell? No, it's liquid. Oh. It's whole liquid was going you to our apartment. So in your basement Yes, floor. yes. And how imagine how it smells. Oh my goodness. And, and your girls are on the floor. Yes. And she was, she gave a birth at that time already. And we had about one month old, second daughter. And we were living on that. And at that time, and other struggle what we had. Because I didn't, she was pregnant. First, we had to find out how to, if she will give a birth. So I have to find out how to get a healthcare, all the stuff. After that, I had to initially to find a place to live. And after that, you have to find a way to, to work. You have to find a job. Because for example, if you live in Brooklyn, you cannot go to Queens to have to, for a job because it will be about two hours. Yeah. So I have to understand where I have to live. And after that, I was looking. So yeah, we spent about five or four months before I got the first job. Because initially we were looking for a rent apartment. Then uh -huh. I was understanding how she will give a birth. Like, a, to do. yeah, setting her up because she doesn't speak English. She doesn't drive, but I wasn't, I didn't have a driver license at the time too. So, and I got my first uh, construction job. I was doing a plumbing job. Uh, only on the fifth month of to be here. So it took you five months to get settled, to find a job before you had any income. And you were living off what you had saved in Belarus yes. at that time. And, uh, uh, and that time, I, it was my introduction to cryptocurrency. <laughs> this, I, had, I, I have one interesting story. So one month I didn't have money to pay for my rent. It was just 1100 but I didn't have it. But before I moved uh, from Belarus, I, it, it's, cryptocurrency started to get more popular. Mm -hmm. And I found out about cryptocurrency. I had 100 bucks, something mm -hmm. uh, on my, like, I wouldn't say redundant, but extra money I could use. And I just bought some cryptocurrency. Just mm -hmm. spent, like put 100 something dollars on that. And this moment when I already in United States in Brooklyn, I have no money to pay for my rent. I like, oh, I, I, I remember I had a cryptocurrency. What the, what, what was the exchange rate right now? Mm -hmm. And I was surprised and shocked when I check it. Mm -hmm. Remember, I put 100 bucks. It was 1400. Oh my God. I like withdraw all of that and pay for my rent. It's like, wow. yeah, it's sometimes you don't know what can save you in the future. But you do it right now, so don't miss the chance. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so... And after that, so we decided that... Uh, we rented another apartment with my friend. Uh, he was working with me on a construction job. But it was two-bedroom apartment. One bedroom was for whole our family. Other bedroom was for him. And we understood we cannot live like that, like a family, because we have two kids, my wife, and so we couldn't live all together. And we decided that my wife and kids, they will go back to Belarus uh, till I will find a job, a better uh, apartment to live. And we thought it's gonna be just one, one month, a couple months, mm -hmm. but unfortunately it took one year and I moved from New York to Miami by that time. Mm. Well, Anna, was, Anna was pregnant and delivered before she went back to Belarus, correct? Yes. And uh, she went back to Belarus with an infant and that was a hard time for her. Um, what was it? What was it like for her? Uh, what was it like for you to have to be separate from each other for a while? Yes, it was a hard time for both of us, especially for her. She was separated from the last husband, I hope, and <laughs> she was uh, also in depression. She got postpartum after birth, in de depression, and it was a hard time for her. And I couldn't do. Much, nothing much, you know, to help her because when she uh, left New York, she went back to Belarus, and I thought it's gonna be just like a couple months. And so I just even remember that we were planning to celebrate Christmas together. It's just a couple months after, but it didn't didn't happen because I, when she left, I found a job and also I do digital marketing and I I do freelancing. 
and I found a couple of clients like outside of my job, but then they left. I was like, wow, I'm making like about six K a month already. So I can find something to rent and live. But then they left and my boss from construction fired me. He said, hey, I see you don't want to make a career in construction. You want to be in digital marketing world because it's your passion. Yeah, it, I have experience in that. I was doing that in Belarus. And he said, I don't want to spend my time teaching you how to do construction job well. So he said, you better to go. I understand you just uh, 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 send your family back to Belarus, but I cannot because it's business. And he fired me. And then my clients, I, I, I was okay with that because I, I still had digital marketing clients. But then one week later, digital marketing clients said, oh, you know, we cut our budget, marketing budget. They're like, what? In that moment, I have no wife, no kids, no job. It was like, oh my God, why I chose to come to America? Why I need it? <laughs> Where's my American dream? <laughs> and yeah, and that's how I started to do Uber in New York. But in New York, to start doing Uber, you need a special driver license. They call it TLC. And you have to learn for that first and have a personal exam to get it. So it took about two weeks and five hundred dollars to get this license, and it was and that's how I started doing Uber in Brooklyn and uh, New York. It it wasn't <laughs> good paying job, but something. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to move uh, to Miami because, as again, I do digital marketing. It's how I promote any businesses online, and we met a uh, kind of community of people in New York who has and have entrepreneurial spirit. They want to make businesses, do something, mm -hmm. not just build nine to five job. Mm -hmm. And all the people said, hey, in Miami, we have Russians, it is a Russian speaking community. Yeah? And they said, hey, in Miami, we have a conference, like event about all this entrepreneurial spirits, Russian speakers, businessmen. So let's go visit it. That's how I got into Miami first time. And I was so impressed. We moved to Miami and in Miami, they have sunny and Isles Beach in Hollandale. It's like everybody speaks Russian over there. Like, whoa, what's going on? And a lot of people who has Russian speakers, who has a property over there and they live over there, they were rich because they have businesses or I found out later they have, um, they have a government job back in their countries. They have bribes. That's how they, buy properties in Miami because they buy in very expensive apartments, like $2 million apartments in the first line. But they still live back in Russia or Belarus or Ukraine because they have a government mm -hmm. positions. That's mm -hmm. how it works in our countries. So you went to Miami and that sounds like you were struggling at that time emotionally. Anna was struggling emotionally. Um, tell me more about that experience. So, in, 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 in Miami, it was easier to find uh, an apartment. I don't know how, maybe God helped me because I found like relatively very quick, like about mm -hmm. in one month. And I said, hey, first step is done. Now I have two bedroom apartment, pretty good and big uh, apartment. And I said, oh, now I can like find a job and get my family back next to me. And it took about one year to find a good a whole first job. Year. Yes. Uh, because, and I, I was doing Uber as a survival job. I had a couple digital mm -hmm. marketing clients, but they not, they couldn't like cover all expenses. They mm -hmm. couldn't uh, give me uh, security and understand that it's going to be like, they, mm -hmm. I, could, I wasn't it's assured. Just, yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's mm -hmm. uh, because Uber sometimes is good, sometimes not. Mm -hmm. In digital marketing, you have clients next day you don't have. It's, it, it was mm -hmm. unstable at all. And we were struggling a lot because... Mm -hmm. And I was living kind of uh, on two cities. I mean, uh, I had to mm -hmm. earn money in the United States and send it back to Belarus because I, I had to pay for their rent in Belarus. I have to provide money for food and everything. But also I have mm -hmm. my expenses, right. which is much higher in the United States. Mm -hmm. It was hard to find it. And yeah, we struggled a lot mentally and uh, we mm -hmm. had like uh, bad feelings. I mean, that was like very, I don't know, words in English. <laughs> How Did to... you regret moving to America at that point? Uh, you know, it's 
in my uh, nature, or in my, it's like my trade, I never regret about anything because mm -hmm. it's, try, it's better to try and say, mm -hmm. hey, I tried, than mm -hmm. not to do. And also I believe in God that he is like a tracking me, not tracking, like leading me. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, because uh, if I'm here, it's, it's destiny, it's not like, because how many people mm -hmm. win a green card? Not a lot, it's just like 1%. Of, mm -hmm. A lot of people play in every year but just one percent win and I won't. So probably I have to be here. And, but what I think probably I, maybe, maybe I shouldn't move to Miami because I spent a lot of time on that. Because when I was living in New York for one year and I started getting connections, known people, understanding something, and then you moved, uh, I moved in, if you move to another city, it's like starting from scratch again. Mm. Yes. So you know, have no connection. Nobody knows, mm -hmm. and you don't know. This is how I got the clients in New York because I get in connection. Right. But when I moved to Miami, you know, now no one, and I, I don't have a clients. And my New York clients say, "Hey, you know," and they stop working with me. So in that case, it's mm -hmm. complicated because when I moved from New York to Miami, uh, we have a friends. They land our landlords mm -hmm. right now, and they said, "Hey, why are you moving to Miami? Maybe we have an apartment in Philadelphia. We want to move to Philadelphia." Mm -hmm. But I did a research about Philadelphia on YouTube. I found Philadelphia. I saw Kensington, <laughs> and like, oh my we god! We have reputation. Yeah, yes. and like, for uh, reasons sometimes. And, and then you do research on YouTube about Miami. What do you see in Miami? Yeah, so uh, Philadelphia, my oh no, Miami, please. <laughs> but it wasn't. So what I understood probably for viewers who are like Spanish speakers. They will be more comfortable in Miami, but for us Russian speakers, it was for, at least for me, it wasn't so comfortable because I spent all year trying to find a first job. All year. When I moved to Philadelphia, I found job like in one month. Wow! In what not, year? not even one month. One month I was just doing renovation in my apartment. Mm -hmm. I applied in Saturday evening, and next Thursday I already got an offer. Oh wow! In Philadelphia, and when I was living. In uh, Miami area, uh, I have a YouTube channel. A lot of people on YouTube was who lives uh, on uh, uh, in the United States. They were saying, "Hey, move back to North Miami. It's not for find a job. It's not for good immigration. Go back to North because there are more jobs in mm -hmm. North." So yeah, it was complicated. It was hard yeah, and heart hurting. Yeah, and. But when you have a green card, you cannot be out of the country longer than one year. Mm. And she was, that my wife was out with kids. And we understood, I still didn't have a job. I still, but we had an apartment, yeah? But I didn't have a stable job, but we understood that one year is like uh, going out soon. So I said, okay, you have to go back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we both, uh, I spent credit cards, and both the tickets back, they came back. And what I want to mention, when the, my family came back to me, it's getting much better because I feel more comfortable, better. I was like, I, I, I feel healed and I found a job in a month. In a month, yeah, I found, I found a job in a month in my field in digital marketing. It was my- Here in Philadelphia. No, in Miami, my first digital, oh. it's, it's a big agency, digital marketing agency. They. Uh, they are in top 500 in corporate. Mm -hmm. They are in the uh, Fortune 500. Yeah. yeah. So they, 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 they're pretty big and you know, they partner with Google, Facebook, LinkedIn. And I was working there about four months maybe. And I got a lot of studies with them because mm -hmm. Google provided study sessions for them. And like, wow. And it was like confirmation for me that my skills are good because mm -hmm. after trying to find a good job and during the year, you can like be concerned about yourself. And then like, oh my God, I, I'm, I'm good. And then I started working with colleagues and understood sometimes I'm even better in some things. <laughs> so, and yeah, but unfortunately we had, uh, we had like, very bad situation in Miami and we had to move to Philadelphia. But I say, no guys, you have to go together. In that case, you can get something good, but if you're gonna be separated, maybe you will mm, end up divorced. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of stories when people divorce even mm -hmm. in the United States, but mm -hmm. it's, it's 
story for another video, by the way. Yeah. It's a lot of divorced people here. Yeah, it's hard to separate a family. And so Anna came back and joined you in Miami, and she didn't like Miami, correct? Mm, yeah. It's a hard place for her. So it was like expectation versus reality, yeah? So because we, it's it's all about, it's the same situation about the United States. We, we had expectations, like what we saw a lot on movies, on videos, but it doesn't match the reality. The same in Miami, because Miami is a touristic attraction. Mm -hmm. So that's... When you think about Miami and watch YouTube videos or something about Miami, wow, it's like a palms, beaches, like a uh, ocean, like. But in reality, it's very hot and humid, and very hard to, <laughs> very hard to find a good job. It's very low-paid uh, jobs, and because a lot of immigrants, you know, Sp yes. Spanish speakers who usually works for less money, mm -hmm. and it's like it's. I come. So I thought it's gonna be. Yeah, like kind of paradise for my wife and my kids, but no, it was mm. it was bad. Especially, uh, my wife doesn't drive, and you cannot. So in back in Belarus, we can we have like uh, how to say that? Like uh, uh, our houses, we build like a like a buildings in the uh, square way, yeah. like we, mm -hmm. we form a square, and then in the side inside of that, we have like a inner yard. Mm -hmm. And if you want to go play with your kids outside and they have a playground exactly inside of that yard mm -hmm. and it's easy to go to play outside. But in Miami and in even the United States everywhere, you cannot go outside if you don't have a fancy house in the backyard, yeah? mm -hmm. but you have to go to play ground. And in Miami, when it's very hot and humid outside, mm -hmm. so she, she told me the story once she took kids outside to, to go to playground. And it was about 15 minutes walk to get there. And when she came to the playground, kids said, mommy, we want to go home, it's too hot. They even couldn't play outside. It's, it's very yeah, hot. so, and you have to think about it. Yes. It's easy, it was easier for me because I was working in an office, so it's air conditioned, mm -hmm. you have car, I am driving, it has air condition. You go to a store, it has air condition, but if you don't have a bit, uh, this possibility to use air condition, it's very bad. It's very so, hot. Yeah, so. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's why we like, oh no. And it's like the climate, the weather, and the economical situation, and immigrant situation, because it's a lot of Spanish speakers. I'm not against them, but I mean... No, they're Russians, where you are. Yeah, it, it, no, it's, right now it's more. Because mm -hmm. after 2020, a lot of people from New York and from North moved to Miami area. It's, we have like a couple cities, it's like Sunny Islands and Hallandale Beach. They have a lot of Russian speakers. But it's still hard to find a good job because sometimes you see bilingual is... We are hiring a bilingual. But as I come, I say, hey, I speak English and Russian, I'm bilingual. But they say, no, sorry, not for you. Spanish. Because, yeah. Spanish, yeah. And e even you can not speak English at all in South Florida, just only speak Spanish. You can find a job and can rent, mm -hmm. like it can, mm -hmm. could be good. But for me, it was kind of not my culture. I was moving to America, not Latin America. <laughs> so you so you moved back to Philadelphia and it was Not like, back, I, I've never I mean, been in Philadelphia. You moved to Philadelphia and you started over a third time. And at this point, you've been in the United States for almost three years, correct? Yes. That's a lot of transition. Yeah, so I had a colleague, I found a job. When I moved to Philadelphia, do you remember uh, I told that I was struggling to find a job in New York, mm -hmm. and I was struggling to find a job in Miami, especially. Mm -hmm. And when I moved to Philadelphia, uh, I applied for, I just submit my application for, for my digital marketing specialty for like, for a bunch of uh, vacancies, job postings. It was Saturday night and Thursday evening, I already had a job offer. Wow. So it's after New York struggling, Miami struggling. When, it, that's when I understood that my, uh, Philadelphia is the place where I have to be. Because mm -hmm. it was the easiest way to find a job mm -hmm. in, in my life maybe. Because like mm -hmm. submit some application, oh, good job offer, yeah. awesome, let's go. So it was like that. And yeah. And what was your first impression of Philadelphia when you got here? So about it, it's like 
uh, doubled impression. First of all, so we loved it because it looks like the weather nature it looks like real, uh, like a Belarus. Mm. And my wife said, oh, we like it back home. And we're so, we're, we're so happy having four seasons. Mm -hmm. And first, we were like in first uh, winter here, we got even snow because now we know in Philadelphia is not a lot of snow usually mm -hmm. during the winter. If you need the snow, you have to go more west, mm -hmm. like a Poconos. But even we got the snow and my uh, kids were so happy because they remember snow from Belarus and like, oh my God, cool. Yeah, and but what I didn't like, I didn't like it's again, it's like bad quality of roads. You like it, you can see that after yes. Miami, you can like oh my god, what what's going on? And it's a lot of trash outside, it's like really dirty. on the yeah. It's Dirtier than New York or equal? It depends. Depends on the neighborhood. Yeah. Yes. But people say the Philadelphia is like a a small in New York, and uh, yeah, so they keep it bad bad roads in New York and <laughs> trash outside. <laughs> so it's kind of like the same. Mm -hmm. So after all of this, do you feel settled now? And how many, how long now have you been here in Philadelphia? So it's our fourth year in Philadelphia. And so yeah, we like it more. A lot of people arguing with us saying, hey, take a look at the crime situation, drug addiction people, like a, a lot of crazy people, like mental, mentally ill people in Philadelphia. But despite all of that, I still feel the Philadelphia or Philadelphia area it's mm -hmm. the place I have to be because mm -hmm. I feel comfortable here and I I develop in here. Mm. We say every day is better and better for us mm. because I get in better, like more money, get in better position, knowing more people. I feel like more uh, not realized. I don't know how to say it. Anymore. Settled? You feel settled? Not settled. I will feel settled when we have a, uh, the house. Like when you own your own house, so, uh, mortgage it at least. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but we need uh, yeah. need a house, a better neighborhood because it's not the best neighborhood. Yeah, but we, we're thinking about a house or townhouse in suburbs. So it's mm -hmm. with nice backyard. Mm -hmm. Our and a dog. And a dog. dog. Yeah, a dog for my daughter. You can borrow my dog. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean. Uh, it's not, uh, we still have place to grow and where to go mm -hmm. to aim and where to aim and target in. But yeah, mm -hmm. I feel comfortable and we'll start arguing with a lot of people from different cities or suburbs of Philly saying, hey, Philly it sucks, Philly it's a mm -hmm. shitty place. But I said, we, it's because I told, it does, it's good to be the same a taste for all people. It's good to be the same city for all people. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine all the, just one city for all people? It's, what's going to be? It's very diverse. So, yeah. It's, so, if I feel comfortable, why are you trying mm -hmm. to pursue me and tell, tell me mm -hmm. that it's not true? But mm -hmm. no, it's, I feel comfortable. I like it. I will buy mm -hmm. a house mm -hmm. some, somewhere in that area. But for some people, I, I met a lot of people in Miami who, who loves it. And they say mm -hmm. they're Miami, but it's like in, because Miami looks like a big Miami area. It's the best place to live. We all have our own preferences. Yes. Yeah. And so, so Eugene, I know that you have, in, in working with Americans and being around Americans now, you have experienced some cultural insensitivity. Um, what, what would you like Americans to know regarding immigration, regarding your own story? I cannot tell about all immigration, but if you're talking about my... Let's call it Russian culture, but it's not Russian. I'm from Belarus. People from Ukraine don't like, they will hate you if you tell them that they are Russians and from Russia and you know why now. But yeah, let's call it like Soviet Union culture. Because mm -hmm. you can meet people from Kazakhstan or Uzbekistan, Tajikistan. They doesn't look like, they don't look like uh, Russians. They, they look like more Chinese. Mm -hmm. I had a good story, by the way. Uh, I was on, on, in Miami, I was working on moving. And my partner, he was from Kazakhstan, but he looks like a Chinese for Americans, yeah? And we were talking in Russian languages, our common language, Russian, we were talking on each other Russian language, and one American guy said, was like, I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> Are you Russian? I said, okay, yeah. He's Chinese, why he speaks Russian to you? But he's, in my friend, I'm not Chinese. <laughs> he's from Kazakhstan, and common language is Russian. 
So, yeah, but in for Russian culture and post-Soviet Union culture, uh, it's important and it's part of our culture to be like, you call it blunt, to, to we call it like to be straightforward and to yeah. say what we think. Mm -hmm. Do not pretend, do not fake our smiles. That's why it's weird for us uh, when you see people, you see a person first time, but is that person smiling, you're like, whoa, <laughs> what do you want? You want to steal my money? Why you why, why do that? <laughs> Because it's you have you have to have a reason to smile with person back. Like if you mm -hmm. smile somebody, for example, in Belarus, it's probably you know that person and you're really happy to see him. Mm -hmm. Not because hey, how are you doing? Oh, yeah. It's and, a cultural difference. People have a, a, a bit of a tough exterior. Yeah, it, and we and what I notice, people who lived here for a long period of time, they go back to Belarus, for example, they do that. They said, ah, oh, how, uh, pretty, hello. Hello. yeah, hello. But it's, it's, and it's confusing our people, uh, other people in Belarus, because of, what? Why are you smiling? Because you have a, like a phrase, if you smile and give no reason, it's probably you're mentally sick. <laughs> yeah, it's true. In Russian language, it sounds like, признak, как это? Смех без причины, признак дурачины. It's как-то так. So, oh, they don't sound. It's, it's, it's weird when people just smile. Uh -huh. But I like it, by the way. I like that because it's better to see a smiling faces than just like uh, not sad. Uh, uh -huh. What 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 other word word for that? Like uh -huh. uh, uh, like grumpy, grumpy, cold, cold grumpy, 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 grumpy uh, which face. Philadelphia natives have a reputation for being. Yeah, but I'm telling you, go to Belarus if you don't like Philadelphia. You compare them. <laughs> you will come back to Philadelphia. And say, oh, so nice people over here. <laughs> so, but Americans should keep in mind that our culture stay forward and blunt and uh -huh. if we, we saying you are a friend we think that mm -hmm. we don't say that to yeah. please you we say that because we think mm -hmm. and feel it yes you what you say yes mm -hmm. so it's so, a main, main so you wish people people understood your culture in this way maybe take people take offense sometimes when they should I'm, I, I i had that experience sometimes people saying hey why is you rude why is you and that other thing is you so arrogant arrogant like i'm arrogant why 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 would you say mm. okay yeah Eugene, what do you what would you like then to say to other immigrants who are starting to rebuild their life here what advice might you give or encouragement so the main thing what i see you know if we talk about russian-speaking communities immigrants and even spanish speakers what i see People come here, live here for like for a while, for 10, 20 years, and they don't speak English. But guys, you moved here not for that. You moved here to pursue, yeah? Pursue. Pursue, to chase your American dream. And if you want to catch your American dream, you have to speak English because it's America. <laughs> Learn English. Because I see a lot of people struggling and living here for a while and they don't speak English and they have no, not a lot of... America is a country, United States is a country of opportunities. But how can you use opportunity if you don't speak the language what that country speaks? Mm. It's insane. So, if you come here, find a, okay, find a survival job to do some kind of job to like cover your bills and food or something, but stuff. First, your focus has to be on studying uh, and learning English. You don't have to like live here, make money, but it's, it's, it's not gonna, you will not have a satisfaction mm -hmm. in your life because it's not why you came. I met one guy, he, uh, he, he is living in the United States, in Miami, maybe 20 years already, but he's still doing it. He's about 50 something years old. And he still mover. He is doing moving job. He has no help for that anymore. He has uh, back pain, or, but he is still doing moving job with Russian speakers because he doesn't speak English. Twenty years, guys. Mm -hmm. And other, but it's like controversial gonna be here because second thing, find your community. But in that case, if you find your community from like from your country or from your culture, probably will you, keep, you will keep speaking your native language. It's like, that's why it's controversial, but you can still be, because when you immigrate to the countries, especially from like, uh, from across the ocean, from Atlantic Ocean, from, from Europe, from Slavic countries, from Asia, 
you meet here absolutely different culture, absolutely different like way of living. It's completely different. It's like a, it's not another country. It's another planet for us. Like mm -hmm. wow, it's like a, we are aliens here, really. Mm -hmm. And you want to keep somebody uh, from your culture next to you. It's familiar. A, it's familiar. Familiar. Yeah. So it's okay. It's, it will help you initially to not be stressed out, not get mentally sick or something. But keep learning English. Learn English. There you go. Eugene, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. And thank you for watching. To be continued, our stories are always being written. And if you like this video, don't forget to click subscribe. And leave your opinion or questions if you have under the video in the comment section. See you.